the national anthem. While we are still standing, we take the second stanza of the national anthem as our opening prayer. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our use the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true, great lofty heights attain, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Shall we be seated, please? Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo Jisio NSAN, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, represented here by the SACP to the President. Dr. Rukaya Gurin. I'd like to welcome here the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, also represented by the Permanent Secretary. Let me welcome all the Honorable Ministers here and the Permanent Secretaries that are representing the Honorable Ministers. I'd like to especially welcome the Chairman and CEO of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Gwarua, retired. I'd like to welcome all the service chiefs from the chief of defense staff represented here to the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Anwar Zuberu Gambo, representative of, the of Army staff, representative of the chief of air staff. I'd like to welcome here our royal fathers that are here present. Let me welcome the UNOC country rep, Mr. Oliver Stolpe, and all the development partners that are here with us. Let me welcome members of the diplomatic corps, collaborating agencies that are here. I can see in the audience members of the NYSE that are present, but the greatest audience in this event are the wonderful children from the secondary and primary schools that are here. Put your hands together for yourselves, all of you children. And so your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I welcome all of you to the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Internationally, it is celebrated every June 26th. Today is 27th, so we are not too far to strengthen action and cooperation in achieving the goal of a world full, free of drug abuse. Every year, as individuals, communities, nations, and indeed the world, we join hands together in global observance to raise awareness on the major problems that drug represent in our society. So today, we shall be sharing research findings, evidence-based data, and life-saving facts for the good of our society. Some will come in terms in form of drama or music. So whether it is the earlier or the high, trying to escape reality, or simply wanting to feel something, it is no secret 
that drug surely has a devastating effect on the lives of our people. So as we celebrate, and I welcome all of you, we must also thank NDLA for the over 2,000, almost 3,000 convictions and people who jailed, the over 17,000 arrests, and the over 160 million kilograms of drugs that were seized. Amazing work. And so, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is how we'll start. We'll have a short documentary on what the NDLA has been doing so far. You're welcome. Can we have the documentary now? The will to succeed has always been the driving force propelling all great people to succeed. Thus, the organizational goal of ensuring a drug-free Nigeria has been the major impetus behind the exploits of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, under the leadership of Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired. For a country that has grappled with myriads of security challenges, and countless youth restiveness, dealing a heavy blow to the menace that illicit drugs represent is of utmost priority as the nexus between drug, crime and criminality has been clearly established over the years. Drug abuse has destroyed and continues to destroy families, our youths, communities and society. It is also behind most criminalities in Nigeria today, be it insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, and action with my colleagues in the armed forces, especially those involved in anti-banditry and, and anti insurgency operations, they have disclosed to me that all the areas that they have captured from the insurgents and bandits, they always discover remnants of drugs littering uh, everywhere. The last couple of months has been quite remarkable for the NDLEA as its exploits have yielded mind-boggling results, some of which have kept the nation bewildered about the scope of the activities of those running the drug trade in the country. The drug barons and their accomplices have over the years upscaled their nefarious activities by devising more and more devilish approaches that will enable them escape the watchful eyes of the operatives of the agency. It is therefore not surprising how pervasive the activities have become with the youth being the most affected. Varieties of illicit substances have become easily accessible with the attendant consequences being visible for all and sundry while the barons and dealers are smiling to the banks a rejuvenated agency under the current leadership has however halted 
this flight of fancy by the drug dealers. The drone approach of offensive action and all-encompassing advocacy had ensured a massive disruption of the distribution network, while virtually every critical stakeholder had joined hands with the agency in the task of ensuring a drug-free nation. The agency has come a long way, and there is still a long way to go. You cannot complete the building of an agency such as this in one year. Massive seizures, arrests, and convictions, as well as four features of cash and assets linked to the drug business, has now become a daily routine for the agency. For instance, a glimpse into the performance of the NDLEA in the first quarter of this year surely underscores the success rate of both the drug demand reduction and the drug supply reduction activities of the agency. To start with, over 677 traffickers were convicted and handed various jail terms between January and March this year, while a total of 3,359 drug offenders were arrested within the same period. The agency equally seized 65,950.891 kilograms of assorted drugs within the quarter, while it cancelled 2,223 people through brief interventions and rehabilitation in NDLEA facilities across the country in the same quarter. High-profile arrests of some barons and their accomplices, as well as daily discoveries and seizures of humongous variety of drugs have continued into the second quarter of the year. I've often said that one of the agencies that this country should actually leverage on, you know, to rebrand our image as a people, as a country, is the NDLE. The heat being turned on those involved in the drug trade and the disruption of the operation wouldn't have been possible without the improvements in the fortune of the agency and its workforce. From an increase in its workforce, to improved welfare as well as additional budgetary provision that will enhance its operations. The journey to the land of a drug-free Nigeria is simply on course. The massive support of the sister agency, development partners, professional organizations, NGOs, civil society organizations, traditional institutions, and other broad spectrum of the Nigerian society as evidenced in the various visits and cutsy calls, donations of critical operational facilities, collaborative efforts, and further strengthened our resolve to deliver on our core mandates. From the number one motivator, President Mohamedou Buhari GCFR, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, to the members of the National Assembly, sister agencies, and all partners and supporters the NDLEA's debt of gratitude will ensure that the NDLEA does not let you down. The progress report of the NDLEA should not be taken as an isolated appraisal. Rather, it should be taken as an integral part of the anti-drug trafficking thrust of the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Not only did Mr. President set the tone for the fight against illicit drugs, by handing the agency the mandate, the direction, and the set objectives. He also provided the catalyst, in particular, 
political will, support and encouragement. These are boosted NDLEA's capability to deliver. This is the NDLEA story. The story of a reinvigorated NDLEA. Come along with us on this journey to ensure a drug-free Nigeria because it is a task that will be and must be done. God bless the NDLEA. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We say thank you to all of the collaborating agencies that are part of this advocacy and crusade. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker has education that is pan Nigeria. He has schooled in Enugu, in Abekuta, in Zaria, and in Lagos. Military work runs in his blood veins. You know why? Because his grandfather was a military man, his father was, and he didn't depart from that path. Formerly governor in Lagos State. Today we are very happy for the energy he has injected into NDLEA. He is the chairman and CEO of the NDLEA. Please join me as I welcome here. A truly military man, solid. Please welcome here Lieutenant General Mohammed Buba Marwa. The Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Professor Yami Oshimbajo, SEN, GCON. Our Excellency, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Muhammad Buhari, ably represented by Dr. Rukaya Gurin, the Right Honorable Speaker, House of Reps, ably represented, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, ably represented by the Permanent Secretary, General Services, the Chief Host, Honorable Attorney General of the Federation, Minister of Justice, Abu Bakar Malami SAN, ably represented by the Solicitor General of the Federation, Mrs. Beatrice Jadi Abba, OFR, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, his Excellency Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud, other members of the Federal Executive Council here present, the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Zubeiru Gambo, the Chief of Defense Staff, and other service chiefs here represented the Honorable Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, heads of agencies and parastatals here present with us, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, and Serki Musulmi, Muhammad Abu Bakar Saad III, ably represented by His Highness, the Emir of Kefi, His Royal Highness, Esunupe, Bagadoji, other 
esteemed royal fathers and religious leaders, they are present. Representative of the chairman, House Committee on Narcotics and Drugs. The chairman, MTN Foundation and former Minister of Health, Prince Julius Adelusi, Adelui. Members of the NDLA board, secretary to the agency, head of the EU delegation, AB represented, UNODC county rep, Mr. Oliver Stolpe, directors of the agency, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am very delighted to welcome you all most warmly to this celebration of the 2022 United Nations Day Against Drug Abuse and Trafficking of Illicit Substances. A special welcome to the Vice President, His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, S-A-N-G-C-O-N, for making our time to be with us on this occasion, despite his extremely tight schedule. We are grateful, sir, for your presence. Today is a day of utmost importance to the global community. In the continuous effort to ameliorate the consequences of abuse of illicit substances and their trafficking. This year, the theme is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. The theme turns the spotlight on an aspect of the drug problem that is critical for Nigeria and indeed the world at large. The drug abuse health challenge came to the fore in 2021 as the human family was recovering from the COVID-19 blight. It was the crux of the World Drug Report 2021, which noted, and I quote, drug use killed almost half a million people in 2019, while drug use disorders resulted in 18 million years of healthy life lost mostly due to opioids. Serious and often lethal illnesses are more common among drug users, particularly those who inject drugs, many of whom are living with HIV and hepatitis C, unquote. The concerns raised by the World Drug Report 2021 were not far-fetched because here in Nigeria, we are beginning to see similar patterns from the findings of the National Drug Use and Health Survey 2018. The survey recorded 14.3 million Nigerians between the ages of 15 and 64 as drug users of which one in four are female. Six million have drug use disorder. A total of 80,000 people inject drugs with attendant risk of the spread of HIV, hepatitis C, and other blood-borne diseases, which in turn raises the stake of a public health crisis. The National Drug Use Survey afforded Nigeria the baseline information needed for the design and implementation of effective prevention, treatment, and care services capable of reducing the demand for drugs and also prevent the morbidity and mortality attributable to drug use. 
But there were obvious challenges. As the report noted, two-thirds of high-risk drug users reported a self-perceived need for drug treatment. Around 40% of those reported that they had wanted to receive drug treatment but were unable to access such services. Aside from the cost of treatment, the stigma associated with substance use and access to required health services are major barriers to treatment in the country. But this year's theme has provided the impetus to break down those barriers and pave way for the unencumbered treatment of health concerns related to drug use. At NDLEA, we have a sense of urgency in tackling the health consequences of the abuse of illicit drugs. We not only acknowledge the importance of improved access to treatment, care, and rehabilitation, we also have integrated that into our activities as part of the radical reforms in the agency since January 2021. In this regard, we are open to options that could effectively help to stave off the public health problems that are drug abuse related. We have systematically approached this new order first by fostering a reorientation of our workforce. In the past months, the agency has been involved in a series of training, including that on drug prevention, treatment and care, DPTC, for our officers to refocus from the criminalization of drug users to the provision of the full gamut of health services to them. And since the realignment, we have made good strides in our drug demand reduction activities. This year alone, we have counseled and rehabilitated 3,523 drug users, mostly through brief interventions in our facilities. We also extended the DPTC training to several NGOs to empower them with the requisite skills and knowledge to cascade the effect to communities and the grassroots. Indeed, the governor's wives who are fully seized and are part and parcel of the war against drug abuse will commence their training on DPTC tomorrow. This training is fully supported by the UNODC and funded by the EU. Thank you very much. EU and UNODC. Given the dearth of treatment facilities in the country, it will be impossible to make the kind of gains we are targeting. To this end, we propose the establishment of model rehabilitation centers to further make treatment accessible and affordable to more people. The good news is that President Muhammad Buhari graciously with the support of the National Assembly, has approved the establishment of six rehabilitation centers across the six geopolitical zones for the NDLEA, three of which have been approved in this year's budget. This is in addition to one rehab center per state to be handled by the Federal Ministry of Health. We are also lobbying the private sector by encouraging the leading lights in the business community to build or contribute to the development of rehab centers as part of their corporate social responsibility. In this respect, we have gotten some positive concrete responses as well as strong commitments from other quarters. Like the Dangote Foundation and the Femi Otadula Foundation, for example. Building treatment facilities is a good step, but it can be rendered inefficient because of the challenge of access that is inherent in a climate of stigmatization where someone labeled a drug addict is treated as a social pariah. To scale this hurdle, 
we embarked on building a toll-free NDLEA helpline. This project, due to be commissioned on Thursday this week, will run as a 24-7 call center that can be called by drug users who need help but are afraid of stigmatization or do not know how to get help. They will be able to call toll-free and get to speak with experts such as counselors, psychologists, psychotherapists, and psychiatrists, among others. The call center will eliminate the obstacles standing in the way of those that genuinely need help as we will be guaranteeing them the confidentiality that they need. The toll-free helpline number is 0800 10 20 30 40. I repeat, 0800 10 20 30 40. Your website, ndleahelpline.com.ng, will help the public to pass valuable information, report incidents, and ask for help. ndleahelpline.com.ng to be launched this Thursday by the grace of God. Still, we need to foster a climate of knowledge, tolerance, and understanding that will allow drug users to take advantage of treatment without fear of any prejudice. As most of us in this room have come to know today that drug addiction is a health problem affecting the brain, the public also needs to know this and throw away archaic prejudices. Oftentimes in our rural communities, and even in some urban centers, people afflicted by drug use disorder or addiction are diagnosed instead as suffering from evil spirits, al -Jannu, or Juju. It is to this end that President Muhammad Buhari launched the war against drug abuse WADA, WADA for short. The WADA campaign was launched by the president at this same venue exactly one year ago. The strategic importance of the war against drug abuse, WADA, cannot be overemphasized because it serves multiple purposes that aid the attainment of our objectives from enlightenment as a pathway to drug use prevention to the reorientation of the masses as a means to the eradication of stigmatization and discrimination of drug users, among other objectives. <clears throat> Aside from the advocacy visits led by myself to some states across the country in the past year, our newly created 14 zonal commands, as well as over 50 state and special area commands across the country, have also taken the WADA advocacy to the nooks and crannies of this country. As of today, WADA is like a movement. Several NGOs, CBOs, civil society organizations, traditional institutions, religious organizations, and good-spirited individuals have also bought into the idea and are helping to cascade the vision down to grassroots. We must not, however, lose sight of the germane fact that our efforts at treatment and care would amount to an exercise in futility if we fail to stem the flow of drugs into and around the country. We must close the tap at the source. That means barons, dealers, and kingpins, those who are the masterminds of the trafficking network, must be removed from the equation. Once upon a time, they were invisible and above the law. But we have changed that narrative. 
with our offensive action. We have taken 10 major drug barons out of circulation. Many more are on our watch list, and we are closing in on them. Better believe it. We are also removing their foot soldiers from the street. Last year, 12,306 offenders were arrested, and 1,385 of them were convicted. From January to May this year, we arrested 5,341, out of which 984 were convicted and are in prison. I beg your pardon, in correctional centers. During these same five months, we have seized over 154 kilograms, 154,000 kilograms of drugs, and destroyed 276 hectares of cannabis farms in deep forests across the country. What is, what is heartwarming to us in the NDLEA is the change we observed in the dynamics of society's response to illicit drug matters over the past 17 months. We have seen a degree of positive response from the government and people in government, and indeed from everyone, everywhere, like never before. There has been a strong response from stakeholders in the illicit drug spectrum. Our partners have rallied more strongly than ever before. Society is warming up to the idea that together we can end the drug scourge. We hope that the momentum will be maintained even as we adopt various measures to lend impetus to the effort. We appreciate our major stakeholders, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, European Union, EU, our foreign counterparts, foreign governments, both chambers of the National Assembly, the Federal Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Ministry of Education, NAFDAQ, NAPTIP, Ministry of Justice, the Judiciary, and other law enforcement organizations, especially the armed forces, police, Nigeria Customs, Nigeria Immigration Service, Nigerian Correctional Service, Department of State Services, NOA, and others for their cooperation and support at all times. We appreciate the clergy. We appreciate our royal fathers who have always stood by us and by the way, both the clergy and traditional institution have shown support for drug tests before marriage. Because if I put the question to this audience, and I know I don't need to, and I say those parents who wish their daughters to marry drug addicts, raise your hands up, nobody will raise his hand. So why take the chance? Since you do HIV and you do the genotype, you might as well add the drug test so that you are certain your daughter is marrying somebody who is drug negative. <laughs> we believe that the drug test before marriage is a veritable drug demand reduction tool. Thank you very much, MTN, for always being with us in the struggle to tackle the drug scourge in Nigeria. Thank you, the NGOs, CSOs, and above all, the media. Presently, there are lots of changes taking place within the health spectrum, which are broadening the latitude of treatments of drug-related diseases. I'm confident that by this time next year, by the grace of God, 
we would have covered more mileage and achieved more milestones. Thank you for listening, and once again, welcome to the event. Let's put a house together one more time for him as he steps down now. Thank you very much. He's handling his assignment in NDLA like an officer and a gentleman. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, have you listened to the chairman? Is this very little poem from Zeb Editing that comes to mind? He was writing a letter to addiction. And he said, I'm writing this to you, telling you we are through. I can't take you anymore. I don't know why I liked you in the first place. All you ever did was to wear me out. No, I don't, now I don't want you anymore. You came to me with promise and joy. Now you look at what you have done. My family, my life, my bank account, you have destroyed. You promised me heaven, but you sent me to hell. You ruined my life and then wished me well. But watch me now as I go on my way. I'm washing myself of you, addiction. I'm washing myself of, of the pain from addiction. Let me very quickly say that uh, we'll have short goodwill messages, two minutes apiece, and we appeal that we stick to the two minutes. Let me kick off by inviting the Honorable Minister of Agriculture. I saw a banner there that says, grow food and don't grow drugs. And it's quite fitting. Let me welcome here Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, SAN, GCON, the Right Honorable Speaker, House of Representatives being ably represented, Your Excellency, the First Lady of Nigeria, Her Excellency, Hajia Aisha, Muhammad Buhari being ably represented, the chairman and CEO NDLEA, General Buba Marwa, our royal fathers, Your Excellency, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I am delighted to grace this great occasion of commemorating the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse otherwise known as the World Drug Day 2022, targeted to continuously address the menace of drug trafficking and abuse, which has become a concern to any progressive-minded nation. As you are aware, the United Nations General Assembly unanimously decided to observe 26th of June every year as an international drug day uh, as International, Drug, International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking as a worldwide event and is supported by the United Nations Office of Drug Control. This year's celebration is very symbolic for Nigeria, considering the recent milestone reached in the illicit drug fight by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency through collaborative efforts towards achieving the goal of a society free of drug trafficking and abuse. The Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, as a critical stakeholder in reducing the incidence of illicit drug trafficking and abuse, has been collaborating with NDLEA in areas such as cannabis cultivation reduction advocacy, using the implementation guidelines provided in the National Drug Control Master Plan 
to 2025. The Minister of Agriculture has continued to express readiness to partner now with NDLEA in implementing the agricultural sector-related strategies contained in the master plan, especially on the need to prevent farmers from engaging directly or indirectly in cannabis production or cultivation and other harmful pl uh, plants to humans. In view of the above, the ministry is also providing alternative engagement through the current National Agricultural Technology and Innovation Plan, NAPTIP 2022 to 2026, to create jobs, employment opportunities for the teeming youth and women across the value chains, across the value chains in the agriculture sector through agribusiness development strategies contained in the native policy document. The ministry on this special day reaffirmed its commitment to continue to collaborate and partner with NDLEA towards delivering maximally on its mandate as a very important national agency, saddled with the responsibility of protecting Nigeria from danger of the menace of drug trafficking and abuse. On this note, I wish to commend the management of NDLEA, especially the chairman, for its dedication and dog resilience and compliance on using the National Drug Control Master Plan 2021 to 2025 as a strategic instrument for sensitizing the citizenry, preventing the use of narcotic substances, and enforcing compliance on drug laws. I urge you to continue to intensify the fight against illicit drug trafficking and abuse towards the realization of a healthier, safer, and more secure society. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I love the way the MTN Foundation put it. They say, your high is their low. When you think you want to get high, your family, your community, the society, because of dropping standard from you, they become low. That is why MTN Foundation believes that the art of fighting drug addiction is the fight of everyone. Let me quickly bring here a man that represents a sector that is also aiding in fighting it, representing the armed forces of Nigeria. I'd like to welcome here the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Anwal Zuberu Gambo, who will be stepping forward here, looking absolutely immaculate to speak on behalf of the Nigerian Armed Forces. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, SAN, Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, the representative of the First Lady here present, permit me to stand on the already well-established protocol. I am indeed most delighted to make a few remarks to this esteemed audience in commemoration of the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking, designed to raise awareness about dangers of illicit drugs. This global effort in tackling the menace is apt, especially at a time the abuse is becoming prevalent, particularly amongst youths. It is therefore gratifying to be part of the 2022 World Drug Day with the team addressing drug challenges 
in health and humanitarian crisis, which aptly stimulates consequences of neglect of our respective obligations in creating a global society free of drug abuse. Bob Riley, an American educator and politician, said, and I quote, drugs are enemies of ambition as well as hope. And when we fight against drugs, we are fighting for the future, unquote. Unfortunately, wrongful use of these illicit drugs poses grave risks to psych and health of addicts usually resulting to unpredictable behavior with attendant effects on security and socioeconomic development, thus jeopardizing the future of our societies and threatening our collective survival. Accordingly, all hands must be on deck as the situation demands all-inclusive and coordinated efforts. In view of this, the fourth edition of Drug Control Master Plan 2021 to 2025 was officially launched on 6 December 2021. The plan comprehensively addressed identified gaps in previous editions. However, the plan can only be as good as its implementation. Pertinently, the Nigerian Navy and of course the armed forces is committed to its membership of the Interministerial Drug Control Committee. Considering that no agency or organization has proven itself completely capable of addressing challenges alone, the Nigerian Navy collaborates with the agency to curb this challenge, which has resulted in numerous seizures. Notably, in October last year, two merchant vessels, MV Chiananari and MV Kataria, were arrested for attempting to smuggle 32.9 kilograms and 13.6 kilograms of cocaine, respectively, into the country. The vessels were monitored using the Nigerian Navy Maritime Domain Awareness Assets from their port of departure in Brazil. Similarly, on the 21st May this year, a wooden boat laden with over 950 kilograms bag of substances suspected to be cannabis sativa, known as marijuana, was intercepted, seized, and handed over to NDLEA. I must I must also state here that the Nigerian Navy and indeed the armed forces has zero tolerance for drug abuse. For this reason, Section 65 of the Armed Forces Act prohibits personnel from abuse, possession, manufacture, wrongful use of drugs and other controlled substances, as well as prescribes stiff punishment of 21 years imprisonment. The special guest of honor, sir. Distinguished guests, let me commend the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency under the distinguished leadership of General Bubba Marwa retired at ameliorating the drug scourge in the country. I will also appreciate our international partners, such as the European Union and the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime for their contributions to this worthy cause. Finally, to partners, stakeholders, and the general public, I want to encourage us all to show wholehearted commitment as we collaborate with one another, as well as comply with provisions of the National Drug Law Control Master Plan 2021 to 2025. As a people, we should not take 
our collective foot off the pedal. Because together, we can defeat this monster and achieve improved health, psych, and security for all Nigerians and the world at large. We all owe it a duty to defeat this threat to our collective survival. Thank you. God bless us all. And as we say in the Nigerian Navy, onwards together. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Chief of Naval Staff. I timed him. He spent four minutes. I allowed it because he was speaking on behalf of the entire armed forces. Can we just stick to the two minutes? Let me welcome here, representing the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Dr. Ifoma Anyawo Tako, to please step forward here. I welcome you. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osimbanjo, S-A-N-G-C-O-N. The First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, here ably represented. The Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, here ably represented the chairman and CEO of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Buba Mawa, retired. Permit me to stand on the already established protocols for want of time. I bring you warm greetings from the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, al Haji Lai Mohammed, who is unavoidably absent and I will present his brief remarks. It is my pleasure to, on behalf of the management and staff of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, to felicitate with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, and other stakeholders on the commemoration of the World Drug Day, which is here today tagged addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. May I also commend the chairman, management, and members of staff of the NDLEA on the giant strides we have been witnessing in recent times in the fight against the peddling, abuse, use, and trafficking of illicit drugs in the country. It is worthy of note that since the assumption of office of the chairman, Brigadier General Mohammed Buba Marwa retired, we have seen the reinvigoration of the fight against users and peddlers of illicit drugs in the country. Our news outlets are flooded with positive outcomes of your exemplary leadership, which you have always been known for. The will, the determination, and commitment to fight this scourge is in your character, and it is in your body language, and we say more grease to your elbow. Permit me to state here that the fight against drug abuse and peddling of illicit drugs needs the concerted efforts of us, all of us. As the ministry overseeing the information sector, we will continue to do our very best and partner with all organizations in this fight. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the line that separates drug abuse from crime and criminality is so thin 
that they cannot be conveniently divorced from each other. Being crucial stakeholders in this fight, let me assure fellow partners that we are committed to playing our role as, a, 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 as a encapsulated in the National Drug Control Master Plan 2021 to 2025. Accordingly, we will work with the NDLEA, with development partners and other stakeholders to initiate policies and programs to sensitize our people in the dangers of illicit drug use and trafficking to our development using available channels at our disposal. Such programs will cover prevention, control, treatment, and enforcement. In addition, we are willing to collaborate with you to encourage rehabilitation of victims through timely treatment in order to reduce dependency. The ministry and its parastatals will partner with the NDLEA and other stakeholders to address an area of very serious concern, which is discrimination and stigmatization in our families and in our communities against victims of illicit drug use, which if not adequately checked, could lead to depression, it could lead to relapse, and even suicidal tendencies. Finally, let me call on fellow citizens to show understanding, compassion, and to avoid stigmatization and other discriminatory behaviors towards victims of illicit drug use. This is the first and crucial step towards encouraging them to seek treatment. Let me also use this medium to appeal to citizens to shun the urge to partake in the use of illicit drugs and its trafficking, or be ready to face its consequences and the dragnet of the NDLEA. I thank you all for listening, and I wish, you all, I wish us all a world free of drug abuse and trafficking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, I would like to invite the permanent secretary and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Gabriel Aduda, to please step forward here. His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, S.A.N. G.C.O.N., the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented, all other protocols respectfully observed. Nothing could have described in more sourcing terms the dire situation of devastation being wreaked on humanity by illicit drugs than Mr. President himself, when while delivering a statement during the inauguration of the war against drug abuse, initiated by the NDLEA on the 2nd of June 2021, said he had seen clips where grandparents were on drugs, parents on drugs, and by extension, their words and their children also on drugs. This is a war that has engulfed three generations at a stretch. That is why for Nigeria especially, and for the world at large, the choice of this year's theme addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis 
could not have been better put. It is a call for us all to rededicate, refocus, redirect, and rethink our existence. We must join hands and rise up as one to meet these contemporary challenges. This forum therefore provides a veritable platform to take stock of our achievements and challenges in the fight against drug abuse and engage in constructive and collaborative discussions in order to forge a clear path to addressing the menace of illicit drug trafficking in Nigeria and across the globe. This will in no small measure assist in the creation of a conducive environment for peace and security and in fostering socioeconomic development of our people in tandem with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the African Union Agenda 2063. It is for this reason that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs welcomes the sustained efforts of the NDLEA in addressing these drug-related challenges. The ongoing efforts by the agency to revitalize the Moribong Interministerial Committee further demonstrates the political will in the fight against drug abuse and illicit drug trafficking. On our path, we want to assure you all that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will remain committed to using the instrumentalities of both multilateral and bilateral platforms at our disposal to drive the process of the implementation of the international instruments on drug control. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all hands must be on deck to ensure that we take advantage of this year's celebration to further deepen sensitization on issues of concern, to galvanize political will and resources to address this daunting challenge. I sincerely thank the chairman and management of the NDLEA, the UNODC, other donor and partner organizations for your sustained efforts and wish us all a successful celebration. I thank you all. Thank you very much. It was exactly two minutes, very diplomatically correct. <laughs> Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome here the DG Naka, Dr. Gambo Aliu. Your Excellency, um, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Yasibanjo, uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Nigeria, ably represented, permit me to stand on existing protocol. NACA congratulates the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency on her grand achievement in the areas of drug abuse and prevention of illicit drug trafficking. HIV free Nigeria is only possible and can only be achieved with drug free Nigeria. Injection drug usage is the fastest way of acquiring HIV. The virus does not need to make an effort to enter the blood. It is introduced directly into the blood. Therefore, when individuals abuse drug, their sense of rational thinking that prevents them from acquiring HIV and other drug that can be blood-borne transmitted disappears. In this regard, <clears throat> NACA has worked with development partners, NDLE, e, and all other stakeholders to introduce medication assisted therapy and needle syringe prevention program as part of the effort 
to reduce HIV transmission among injection drug users. NACA is committed to working with NDLEA in making sure that HIV prevention uh, improves tremendously among people who inject drugs and NDLE services are also made available to our clients, those who were identified are people that inject drugs. The NDLE newly launched hotline will work hand in hand with NACA 24-hour hotline 6222 that has been in existence for the past decade. Again, I would like to commend NDLE for the increasing effort um, and also the actions to ensure drug-free Nigeria. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention. Because he did one minute, 59 seconds. Let's put our hands together one more time for him. So your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we'll be wrapping up the goodwill messages by inviting a very pretty, delectable lady, model, actress, scriptwriter, film producer. She bestrides both the Yoruba and English genre of Nollywood, like a colossus, very young, but she has amazing, amazing pedigree. She, had, she produced the movie on drug known as Trap. She's looking very gentle, but she's a lioness in front of camera. Please welcome Jumoke Odetola. Your Excellency, the Vice President, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaja, standing on the existing protocol. Thank you very much for this great platform. I'm very happy to be given this opportunity to do what I love to do. My name is Jumoke Odetola. I'm an actress, a filmmaker, and also an SDG ambassador. I'm very passionate advocating against drug abuse and its addiction, rehabilitation, and relapse, because I've seen the huge effects this can have on individuals, families, the society, the economy, and the world at large. Through drug and substance abuse, I have seen promising futures destroyed. I have seen close families, close-knitted families fall apart. I have seen the mighty fallen. I have seen people fall from grace to grass. Being a filmmaker, I know I have the power of influence because filmmaking is a great tool of mass communication and formation. I have traveled to countries and continents my feet has never stepped to simply by watching movies. I have experienced their cultures and traditions. This is the power of storytelling through movies. There are people who do not go to mosque, who do not go to churches, who wouldn't even adhere to the teachings of their religious leaders. They watch movies, it influences their way of lives, and a lot of them get liberated. That is also the power of influence. Earlier this year, I got awarded as one of the 100 most influential young leaders in Nigeria. That for me is not just an emblem of honor, Thank you very much. That for me is not just an emblem of honor, it is an emblem of great responsibility, knowing that I have the power of influence and I must put this to positive use. There are a lot of youngsters, like my very beautiful boys and girls right at the back there, who look up to us celebrities as role models. They see us and they adore us. 
they want to imitate our lifestyles. That for me is also the power of influence. I feel the greatest disservice anyone in the position of power and influence can do is to look away, turn the other eye to the reality staring at us. The reality that drug and substance abuse has become a canker worm that must be combated with full force. Because as we know, drugs and crimes are closely related. So this is why I'm very, I'm very happy and grateful about this great synergy because I feel this can be combated fully by coming together. It's not a fight for one agency, it's a fight for all. I want to appeal to us that we need to come together to do this because we cannot pretend it is not there. We cannot pretend not to see the reality. Even if we feel we are free from this um, drug and substance abuse, what happens to the ones who are not free? Should we pretend they are not there? Should we look the other way at the reality staring at us? We must understand that the ones who are not clean are capable of jeopardizing and destroying the well-structured plan we have. This is why I'm appealing to us so that in the next few years, we do not put all the budgets that should be allocated in developing and enriching the economy into rehabilitating and clearing the mess created by people under the influence of this mind-altering substances. I made a movie titled Trap. This movie was premiered last Friday at the Silverbird Galleria. I especially want to appreciate the chairman of NDLA General Boba Marwa for giving me the great opportunity and the platform to premiere the movie. Thank you very much. I had the opportunity of meeting with him just once and he saw the film and he said this must be incorporated into the world drug events. I feel in my own space, within my own power, I've been able to contribute something to this laudable cause. And I'm appealing to all stakeholders, agencies, government prostitutes, and everyone to join hands with me in pushing this project. I feel it's a project that should be seen in all the six geopolitical zones. Because like I said earlier, filmmaking is a great tool of mass communication and sensitization. This is a fight for all. And I want us all to see ourselves as somebody that can make an influence, that someone that can make an impact. It is not a fight for one person, no matter who you are, no matter the position you occupy. My beautiful students there, you have the power of influence. No matter the age, no matter your age, no matter your gender, you can make an influence. You have the power to influence someone positively. A drug-free society, a drug-free society is consequential to the growth and development of the nation. Thank you very much. I think I have to leave now. I still have more to say about because of the time. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Thanks for this great platform. And thanks to you. You know, when storytellers start, they, come, they don't know how to stop. <laughs> but thank you for using your movie to make our young ones avoid the trap. Let's put our hands together for our ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Very quickly, let me invite the representative of the European Union. If you're here, please step forward. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
the First Lady of Nigeria ably represented, honorable ministers and heads of agencies permit me to stand on the um, existing protocol. On behalf of the EU delegation to Nigeria and ECOWAS, and on the occasion of the National Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, I would like to warmly uh, welcome you to this year's uh, World Drug Day. Nigeria is a key partner for both AU and UNODC, and our tripartite dialogue in the areas we cover under our mutual collaboration has been long-standing and duly appreciated from our side. We highly value the long-standing partnership with the government and UNODC under the response to drugs and related organized crime, implemented for the last 10 years in Nigeria. The EU, together with UNODC, has proposed a balanced approach to drug control with equal attention paid to drug interdiction and drug demand reduction. EU support towards the new National Drug Control Master Plan also confirms the engagement that the European Union has undertaken in the framework of the EU Action Plan on Drugs 2021-2025. While we wish to reiterate our support towards the efforts in curbing drugs and related organized crime at this uncertain period, we also need to be reminded that drug trafficking, abuse and related crime continue to constitute serious challenges for the country and we expect our Nigerian partners to remain committed throughout and in the end of the project, especially in the post-COVID world. In 2022, we have been strongly advocating for drugs issues throughout the year to make sure that we have contributed from our side to highlighting the importance of mobilizing national provisions and structures and underlining the relevance of regulating the sectors of drugs and narcotics for the benefit of the public health. We are also aware of the needs on drug demand reduction. Since 2020, we have been supporting the volunteering of the doctors and nurses all over Nigeria and the network Drug Help Net in response to drug users and families in collaboration with the drop-in centers supported by the project. PPE material has also been donated to drop-in centers for the daily conduction of their activities in adherence with the national health standards and uh, recommendations. As you all know, we have extended our support uh, until the end of the year. The extension is supporting to a great extent the Atris Children Project in collaboration with the VP's office. We very much appreciate the sports-based nature of the program, which allows for the use of the interest of the children to provide training and life skills with the aim of enhancing resilience and addressing drug prevention, treatment, and psychosocial care. The intervention is also aligned with the project objectives, but also has a strong focus on education that the European Commission and the European Union in general is seeking to infuse into cooperation uh, under the current and the future programming period. We also encourage closer coordination with ECOWAS. This is particularly important in the areas of drugs as the trends in West Africa are particularly worrisome. Ladies and gentlemen, since health is the theme of uh, this year's World Drugs Day, let us all recall and value the provisions we have made for the establishment of programs for the prevention and treatment of drug dependence in Nigeria. We do make an international appeal, an appeal to the international community to continue the good work that the EU and UNODC have been putting in, in the past 10 years. Sustainability of our report is of paramount importance to us and we will be in favor of seeing continuation of that support under the flagship of our international partners. At this point, I would like to thank UNODC for the implementation of our support in Nigeria for the last 10 years in the area of drugs and related organized crime, as well as the governance response to it. The level of commitment of our Nigerian partners and especially NDLEA, the Ministry of Health and NAFTAC, to just a few, is commendable. Thank you so much for the attention, thank you for the invitation, and um, I wish us all um, a year free of drug abuse and illicit trafficking. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we very quickly move on to the country rep of UNODC Nigeria. Mr. Oliver Stop, Stolpe, I don't, at times I'm, I get confused. I welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Osimbanjo, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, the First Lady, 
here ably represented, members of the Executive Council of the National Assembly and of the Nigerian Judiciary, please allow me to adopt the otherwise well-established protocol. Please allow me also to express my profound thanks to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, to the MTN Foundation, and to the European Union delegation for co-organizing today's event and giving me the opportunity to share with you the message by the Secretary General of the United Nations on the occasion of this day. And I quote, this year's International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking shines a spotlight on the impact of drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. Conflicts, climate disasters, forced displacement, and grinding poverty create fertile ground for drug abuse, with COVID-19 making a bad situation even worse. At the same time, people living through humanitarian emergencies are far less likely to have access to the care and treatment they need and they deserve. Meanwhile, criminals are profiting from people's misery. With cocaine production at records high, a five-fold increase in seizures of methamphetamines and a near quadrupling of amphetamines seizures over the last decade. On this International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, we renew our commitment to ending the scourge and supporting those who fall victim to it. This includes non-discriminatory policy solutions centered around people's health and human rights, underpinned by strengthened international cooperation to curb the illicit trade and hold accountable those who profit from human misery. We must also strengthen science-based services for drug users and treat them as victims who need treatment rather than punishment, discrimination, and stigma, including the treatment of those living with infectious diseases like HIV AIDS and hepatitis. We cannot allow the world drugs problem to further shadow the lives of tens of millions of people living through humanitarian crisis. On this day, ladies and gentlemen, let us commit to lifting this shadow once and for all and giving this issue the attention and action it deserves." End of quote. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me also to add a few words of my own. First of all, 2022 marks, as we have already heard, the end of 10 years of intensive cooperation between the Nigerian government and the European Union with the implementation support of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. $40 million worth of technical assistance, including policy research, training and equipment, strengthening of treatment centers, and the rolling out of extensive prevention programs have been part of this program. The National Drug Control Master Plan that was already mentioned several times today, was adopted as an outcome of this cooperation in December last year. It creates an ambitious platform for a modern drug policy based on treatment, prevention, and enforcement. Now, it will be critical going forward that the government provides the necessary resources. In that regard, I'm extremely grateful for all the representatives of the National Assembly here present and of course for the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. I hope that they will hear this call. We will need substantial resources. We will need substantial resources to roll out unplugged to all 27,000 secondary schools in this country. 
we will subs need substantial resources to provide access to treatment and counseling for drug users who want to overcome their addiction. We will need substantial resources to enhance further the interdiction capabilities of NDLEA and other law enforcement agencies, including, of course, the Nigerian Navy, at seaports and at airports. And we will absolutely need to conduct another national drug use survey so that we better understand to what extent our efforts collectively are yielding the results that we have set out to. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by mentioning that today, as it is the case every year, we will be launching the World Drug Report at 3 o'clock at a global online event. So I hope I will see you there again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, let me welcome the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, represented here by the Solicitor General of the Federation, Mrs. Beatrice Jediagba OFR. Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Osibajo, SAN, GCON, Federal uh, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is ably represented here, I beg to adopt the protocols already duly established. I'd like to apologize for the absence of the Honorable Attorney General, who is engaged in another official assignment outside of Abuja. It is also my personal honor to be with you today, having spent 14 years of my public service career as a staff of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. I will now proceed to read the remarks of the Honorable Attorney General. It's my pleasure to be part of this occasion to commemorate the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and drug trafficking. Today has been designated by the United Nations as a call to action for all stakeholders to constantly review and redouble their efforts towards achieving a world free of drug abuse. It is no doubt a formal expression of the determination of the global community to strengthen action and cooperation to achieve the goal of a world free of drug abuse. It is also an avenue for sensitization and to raise awareness levels on the adverse consequences which drug abuse and illicit tra drug trafficking poses to humanity. This year's campaign appropri appropriately themed addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis could not have come at a better time now that the world is facing various crises stemming from anarchy triggered by terrorist groups, the opioids epidemic due to organized crime and transnational drug trafficking cartels, global recession among others, all of which have leads to humanitarian situations. Indeed, Nigeria as a nation cannot afford to lower her guard on drug abuse, particularly in view of the grim statistics confronting us both as a continent and as a nation. According to the latest 2021 report by UNODC, a worrisome 14.4% of Nigerians are presently engaged in one form of drug abuse or the other. Out of this, at about 277 are sadly youth who are the future drivers of national growth. In addition, the disturbing rise in cases of gender-based violence can be attribute, attributable to drug abuse, as statistics also indicate that one in every 10 drug user is female. And this does not augur well for women empowerment, 
affirmative action on, and protection of the girl-child initiatives. Given the social, health, and security implications of abuse of controlled substances, it would be an act of gross negligence for government and relevant authorities to adopt a business-as-usual approach. Thus, our gathering here today is part of efforts to secure the future of our nation. Aside from being an enabling factor to crimes and insecurity being witnessed across the nation, drug abuse also wrecks direct havoc on individuals and their families. The destructive effects on public health, community dynamics, and the economy are well documented and glaring in our day-to-day -day lives. It is common knowledge that there is a connection between the abuse of drugs and the surge in crime and criminality. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to note with satisfaction ongoing efforts by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency aimed at reducing drug demand reduction. I would like to encourage the leadership of NDLA to continue to pay close attention to the need to enhance facilities to support the treatment and rehabilitation of drug users and addicts. I would also like to commend to the leadership of the agency the findings and recommendations contained in the special point of interest report which was released by UNODC recently. I believe the contents of the report are germane to deepening our counter-drug measures. We need to take particular note of the rising web-based sale of illicit drugs through online channels that are not usually tracked. It is not in doubt that the illicit drug problem is complicated, hydra hided and regenerative, which is why a coordinated national approach to addressing the problem and its consequences is paramount. Therefore, I call on families, schools, civil society organizations, professional associations, religious bodies, the academia, community leaders and individuals to work for the common good by joining this concerted effort to read our communities of abuse and trafficking in illicit drugs. The war against drug, tra drug trafficking and abuse is indeed one that requires collaborative efforts of the whole of government and the whole of society. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me also to, to appreciate the wisdom of the President, President Mohamed Buhari, in appointing a distinguished Nigerian, Major General Brigadier, Major, sorry, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired OFR, as the Chairman Chief Executive of the agency. He has indeed reinvigorated the drug trafficking war. General, we are really proud of the energy and the commitment you've brought to the agency since assumption of office. I would also like to commend Mr. President for his unwavering support and commitment to the war against drug trafficking. The recent giant strides being recorded by the agency reveals our sordid past while also reflecting our bright hope for the future. The high profile arrests and seizures by the agency since the appointment of the present chairman is an eye opener for us all to understand how deep the drug scourge has eaten into our society. Let me also use this opportunity to express appreciation to our stakeholders and international collaborators, particularly the United, European Union and the United Nations Office for Drugs and Crimes for their unwavering support for the activities of the agency. I would also like to appreciate the efforts of the members of the Interministerial Committee on Drug Control, civil society organizations, and the academia for their contributions to our national drug control efforts. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we must also pay tribute to the gallantry of the officers and men of NDLA. They all deserve commendation for their hard work, dexterity, and selfless service in waging this war against drugs, oftentimes at the expense of their lives. As a result of their efforts, 
Nigeria is today counted among the countries making serious efforts to curb domestic and global drug trafficking. In conclusion, I hereby reiterate the unwavering engagement and support of the Federal Ministry of Justice to NDLA and our development partners in the sustenance of drug control efforts in our country. I thank you all for your kind attention. One is not surprised that she's the Solicitor General of the Federation, delivery poise and candor. Let's appreciate her one more time. Amazing. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will adjust our program a little bit uh, because of the tightness of His Excellency the Vice President's schedule. We will adjust a little bit. So the Vice President will be launching the NELA branded drug testing kits, presenting prizes to winning schools, and delivering his address. But before he steps forward, let me invite here a consultant in addiction psychiatry uh, who works as a consultant in the UK and also CEO of Intaxet Consortium. Uh, they, they have various elaboration centers in West Africa and Nigeria. Dr. Vincent Udenze will be using about two minutes to explain the test kits, and then we'll invite His Excellency, the Vice President. Dr. Vizan, please. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Usibanjo, please permit me to stand on existing protocol. We all know that in Nigeria, we have a huge drug problem. Substance use disorder is no respecter of age, socioeconomic status, religion, or any other factors. But it's important that we find out whether people are actually on drugs. How do you know if someone is taking a substance? There's something we call the eyeballing test. A lot of us will take a look at someone and then say, it looks like this person is on drugs, sometimes just by their hairstyle. But we know there is no evidence for that. NDLEA has decided to bring forward a confirmatory screening tool to enable us to determine whether someone is on drugs. Interestingly, the concept of NDLA having a drug test kit had been with the senior management for well over four years. Not much progress was made, but it took General Buba Marua two months in office to fast track this project and bring it to four. As a Nigerian who lives on both sides of the world, I live in the UK and in Nigeria, things like this just give us a bit of confidence that it's really sometimes always about leadership. When you have the right, per thing, right person in post, things just change in minutes. So today I'm going to talk about the drug test kit, the NDLA drug test kit, and why the NDLA drug test kit. It is NAVDAC approved. It has got what you call an adulteration parameter. So if you take a urine sample and you run a drug test, we all know that some people have ways of trying to manipulate it. I'll give an example. I have a young person who came for a drug test in our clinic and tied Lipton bag around his waist. So when he went into the toilet to pee into the cup, all he did, had to do was to bust that little bag and the urine poured into the cup. And he wanted to run a test. Now, why will NDLA drug test kit be different? There's something called creatinine, which is a product, a byproduct of muscle. So only human beings or animals have got creatinine in urine. 
the NDL drug test kit will test for creatinine. So that means if it's Lipton, it will not test positive for creatinine. Secondly, we know that there are people out there who take all sorts of substances to mask the ability of drug tests to pick up substances. This particular test, the chairman made sure it was included. So that is pH. So if you take something that changes the acidity of your urine so that it becomes difficult to pick up the substance, so the substance might be negative, but the pH will tell you that the acidity of this urine is abnormal. Then you know that person has done something or taken something to mask the test. Thirdly, it has got an inbuilt thermometer. Urine is warm, has a temperature. So if you scoop water from the toilet, expecting that that drug test will not give you the right result, it will not have the temperature of urine. So these are interesting parameters you're gonna find in the NDLA drug test kit. I must inform you that I'm very much aware that currently in Nigeria, there is a court case going on where an officer was tested some years ago. He was positive. He was suspended and eventually terminated, and he took the agency to court, not NDLA, a government agency to court. His case at the moment is the fact that the drug test kit that was used at the time was not NAVDAC approved. So NDLA is giving you a NAVDAC approved test kit with adulteration parameters that can test a lot of substances. Another important part of this test kit is that they have insisted that they want families to be able to check at home. So it's not just about testing an, a prospective employer, employee or student, but as a parent, you will need to sometimes call your 11-year-old child and say, mommy loves you, daddy loves you, but we know there are kids out there that will put pressure on you to do things you should not really be doing, and they will tell you not to tell dad and mom, because that means you're not cool. But you can actually say dad loves you and wants to check, and you get your child to pee into that cup, and you would know, and you would detect early, so that this drug test by NDLA will serve as a deterrent, will serve for monitoring of you know, people, and will be available for families to also be able to buy and use. So today, with all these big stakeholders here present, NDLA will be calling upon you to work with them to make sure that their test kit becomes available to you in schools, universities, offices, and at home. Thank you very much. Dr. Vincent, that music is for you, for doing a good job. So very quickly, this is what we will do. Let me invite the following. We will first of all unveil and launch this by His Excellency the Vice President. He will now present gifts to the people, to winners of the quiz contest, and then he will step over and deliver his address. Let me invite the Chairman and Chief Executive of NDLEA to please step forward. Uh, Brigadier General Buba Maro, please, we welcome you. Let me welcome members of the National Assembly. If we have the Chairman of the Drugs Committee and Narcotics Senate and House, the Chief of Naval Staff, I invite you, sir. Um, Rep of NO, UNODC, Rep of EU, the representative, the Chairman of MTN Foundation. the representative of the Minister of Women Affairs, Health, Education, Foreign Affairs, Information, and Justice, representative of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, NACA DG, NAFDAC DG, or representative, Controller General of Customs, 
And now let me invite His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, Jumoke, join us here. Jumoke, daughter. La. It is my very special pleasure and privilege to. It is my very special pleasure and privilege to officially commission the NDLA drug testing kit for the benefit of all of us and the entire Nigerian society and to the glory of the almighty God. Please let me quite specially welcome the representative of His Excellency, the First Lady, to please also join us here. Please. So very quickly, we'll be moving on to the presentation of gifts. As we say thank you to all those that have come on stage, we'll leave His Excellency, the Vice President on stage. The Chairman of NDLEA and His Excellency the Vice President are the only ones that will remain on stage. Let the rest of us go down now. And now we, we have the prize given for the, for the quiz competition. The second school that came second, we want to welcome here Intelligence Quotient Academy, Gariki Abuja FCT. We have three pupils from the school Rahima Abdul Malik, Fadil Ibrahim, and Khadija Kamil Sani. Please step forward here. Come to the stage. Where are they? Oh, okay. Ah, sorry. Congratulations to you. At least you can tell us you, you had a presidential handshake. 
Congratulations as a step down now. Thanks. So, thank you. You can step down. MTN will tell you everywhere you go, carry your intellect with you. Congratulations. And now the best school in this interview, in uh, quiz competition, is Fontage International School, Gudu, Abuja. Ramat Sakman, Olua Toyi Shola Adeyami, and Ataba Shew. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Let's appreciate them, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And so on your behalf, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for me to invite His Excellency, the Vice President, to deliver his address. Your Excellency. Your Excellencies, the representative of the First Lady, distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly present, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Muhammad Mahmoud Abubakar, the Solicitor General of the Federation, Mrs. Beatrice Jediagwa, the Chief of Naval Staff, Rear Admiral Awal Zubairu Gambo, our host, Chairman of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Buba Mawa, retired. Our international development partners and civil society collaborators, especially the European Union, the UNODC, and the MTN. Your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Royal Fathers present, the members of the Youth Service Corps who are here, students of various schools, and especially the recipients of prizes and awards, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to join you today at this year's United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking. The observance of the day goes beyond rituals, and it's a highly important commemoration of the joint, solemn, and unwavering commitment of UN member nations to take and strengthen action towards achieving a world free of drugs. And this is an important objective indeed. Drug abuse has become a global public health and socioeconomic challenge. And it places a huge burden, as all of us have heard already, on our healthcare system. And it portends grave consequences for our young people and the productivity of our labor force. And it undermines the security of our communities. The UNODC reports that drug use was responsible for the death of almost half a million people in 2019. And drug use disorders resulted in the loss of 18 million Healthy, years of healthy life. A 2018 National Drug Use Survey also revealed that Nigeria, at the time, that there were about 14.3 million drug users, of which close to 3 million suffered from drug use disorders. This figure represents a 14.4% prevalence in Nigeria, a prevalence rate in Nigeria, which is about three times the global average prevalence rate of 5%. The UNODC also in its 2021 World Drug Report projects that by 2030, the number of people using drugs around the world will rise by 11% and by 40% in Africa alone. 
Of course, this is a disturbing projection because as the country with the largest population in Africa, this implies that Nigeria's use of uh, drug abuse uh, prevalence will rise substantially, especially considering the proportions that we are uh, leaders in terms of population. In the past 17 months, the NDLEA, we're told, has recorded over 17,647 arrests of offenders, including 10 drug barons, and I'm sure that that number increases every day if you're following the news, with over 2,369 convicted persons and over 150,000 kilograms of drugs that have been seized within the same period. So the statistics show that 5.5% of the population aged between 15 and 64 years used drugs at least once since 2019. This is precisely the age bracket that we cannot afford to lose to drugs. And if you look at the theme of this year's uh, International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking, it turns our attention to a rather different dimension of the problem. This is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. The increasing trends of drug abuse in areas of conflict and in post-conflict settings, such as in IDP and refugee camps. And this is of special concern to Nigeria, as we are in the throes of civil conflict and terrorism resulting in the displacement of large numbers of our population. The problem is a hydra-headed one. First, conflict and instability undermine domestic law enforcement and compromise border controls, which makes smuggling of drugs much easier. The second is that young people, who are usually the most vulnerable to drug use, also form the majority of armed combatants, and not surprisingly, there's a widespread use of drugs by these terrorists. And of course, we've heard that already uh, from uh, the chairman of the NDLA. And many of these terrorists and uh, criminal armed groups, of course, use drugs extensively. Indeed, some studies have shown that after controlling for armed groups and individual level variables, drug intake and alcohol consumption sharply increase the violent actions perpetrated during conflicts. Third is the triple jeopardy suffered by displaced persons, those in IDP camps and refugee camps. There's the trauma and stress of displacement. Its immediate consequences, of course, are unemployment, coping with new cultures, loss of self-esteem, and hope. And this puts displaced persons at greater risk of substance abuse. For women and girls in particular, the situation is more harrowing. They're exposed to severe traumatic situations due to violence and sometimes sexual exploitation, especially in camps, which together with other stressful factors of displacement can lead to drug use. These problems are all worsened by the expected lack of access to treatment and therapies for drug abuse in refugee or IDP camps. The UN has since 2004 drawn the attention of all its member states to this problem its dimensions and possible remedies. In a re resolution which was passed by the Economic and Social Council in that year, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the UN said that drug control and related crime prevention assistance for countries emerging from conflict must be paid, special attention must be paid to it. And the whole range of problems of the general population, especially those related to vulnerable groups, uh, and, and including combatants and non-combatants. The council then called for act action to strengthen drug control measures by dealing with both the supply and demand ends of the problem. The federal government has also taken both specific and general actions over the past seven years, and all these actions have been directed at trying to control or deal with the menace of illicit drug trafficking in Nigeria in particular. These actions include adopting a synergized and multi-agency approach. The government has deployed counter-terrorism and counter-narcotics initiatives led by the NDLEA, which have successfully disrupted several high-profile drug networks. And as part of these efforts, with the funding from the European Union 
and technical support from the UNODC, relevant MDAs, and civil society organizations. We rolled out the National Drug Control Master Plan for 2021 to 2025. This plan itself leverages an extensive evidence base, including the very, the very first National Drug Use Survey, which was conducted by the National Bureau of Statistics in 2018. The master plan adopts a comprehensive and inclusive approach to addressing issues of drug supply reduction, uh, um, issues of drug abuse. And it has, uh, it is based on four thematic uh, pillars, drug supply reduction, demand reduction, access to drugs for medical purposes, and governance and coordination. The plan is not just an approach majorly targeted at drug supply reduction. Is a much more balanced plan, and it, it is much more health-centered and looks at drug control, not just from the point of view of abuse, but also from a health perspective. A year ago also, President Muhammad Buhari launched the War Against Drug Abuse, WADA, an advocacy campaign designed to create awareness and propagate an anti-drug culture in Nigeria. This initiative involved the setting up of coordinated anti-drug committees in various states, in various local governments across the Federation. The President also approved the recruitment of an additional 5,000 personnel to enable the NDLEA extend special commands across all local governments. And I think it is also fitting to mention at this point, and I'm sure it's obvious to all, that in the Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NLA, especially in the last two years, under the very dynamic leadership of General Buba Mawa, the NDLA chairman, has been much fiercer and sharper in his determination to stamp out drug abuse and trafficking in the country. I think his vision and strong resolve has given the war against trafficking and abuse new energy new purpose and much clearer direction. While a great deal of effort has been invested in fighting drugs, uh, drug abuse in Nigeria, and a huge level of success has been recorded, and I'm sure we've seen from the figures that the, the sheer numbers you know, tell us that much has been done. It is still evident that we still have a lot of ground to cover. The number of drug trafficking cases this past week alone proves that there is even much more illicit drug activity going on. Every time you arrest one or two people or several people, it does show that there is a problem. The express vision of the NDLEA goes beyond uh, apprehending drug criminals and convicting them. We must deepen that effort and very clear that is not just apprehending, but also stamping this drug uh, trafficking and uh, drug trafficking and drug abuse out completely, relentlessly breaking illicit drug supply chains and distributions um, all over the country, discouraging drug use through intensive outreach and sensitization, and also promptly prosecuting traffickers. But above all, we must intensify rehabilitation of drug addicts, because what we are faced with is indeed a public health crisis a crisis that is taking lives, destroying families, and shattering communities. I'm glad to hear that in 2021 alone, about 8,000 drug users were counseled and rehabilitated by the NDLEA. And in the first, year of, uh, the first half of this year alone, over 11,000 drug users have been counseled and treated. We must maintain a multidimensional approach and a holistic approach to tackling drug abuse. It is true that during the COVID-19 pandemic, accelerated drug use across the world was experienced, especially in rural areas, with many resorting to drug abuse and other negative coping mechanisms due to the lockdowns and socioeconomic shocks. Access to illicit drugs became easier with online sales, and we've heard a lot of that already this afternoon, and contactless drug transactions, both influenced, and all of these influenced mainly by the pandemic. But the new normal still offers us opportunities for increased innovation in tackling the menace, especially through technology-based monitoring systems.
for promptly detecting and addressing the, the drug market, the, the changes in the drug market and the changes in marketing of these drugs. And also accelerating mobile outreach programs, remote consultations and treatment for those who suffer from drug use disorders and who do not have uh, appropriate care. As much as the federal government through its agencies and the state governments will lead the charge with the decisive policy initiatives, these strides must be complemented by changes at the family and community level also. The kind of change we seek regarding drug abuse cannot happen without the collaboration of families, faith-based organizations, and community leadership at the local levels. We must spearhead massive value reorientation across the country, reassessing cultural factors and systems that support drug abuse and trafficking. Our communities everywhere must rise to this challenge. The federal government will continue to support the NDLEA to fulfill its mandate, especially through data-driven and evidence-based policymaking, will continue to unearth enduring and sustainable solutions to the underlying causes of drug abuse. Once again, let me uh, commend the new, dynamic, and greatly improved NDLEA and appreciate uh, the very gallant officers for their service to the country. We must also We must also appreciate our development partners for the successes recorded so far and for their firm resolution to support the effort to ensure a clean and drug-free Nigeria. We are winning this war, and there is no question at all that the days of the scourge of drug abuse and trafficking and dependency are clearly numbered. But it will involve even greater investment in focus and determination for the long haul. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Please, because of the tightness of the schedule of His Excellency the Vice President, every other aspect of this program, speech by the rep of the SGF, speech by the chairman of MTN, and um, other things will continue. We'll just take the national anthem now to exit him. All of us will be back on our seats, and then we'll continue. So shall we have the national anthem now? Please, let's go back to our seats. Probably the chairman is the only one who is allowed to see him off. We'll, we'll be back on our seats. Let's be back on our seats, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go back to our seats. As I invite here, the Permanent Secretary General Services, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, who will be stepping forward here.
to make his address on behalf of the SGF. I welcome you, sir. I welcome you. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, SN, GCON. Her Excellency, the First Lady of Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Buhari, ably represented. the very hardworking chairman of NDLEA, General Buba Marwa, retired. Permit me, please, to align with the already established protocols for want of time. I bring to you the goodwill message of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who would have loved to be here this afternoon, but for the exigencies of his office, he has asked me to present this message. I am delighted to be here today on this auspicious event of the commemoration of the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking. This day was resolved by the United Nations in recognition of the threat posed by drug abuse and trafficking in order to raise awareness about the problems associated with psychoactive drugs. The theme of the 2022 commemoration, which is addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis, is therefore timely. Drug abuse has become one of the serious global issues in both developing and developed nations. And it is undeniably the greatest threat to the overall growth of individuals, cultures, countries, and the world at large. It has the potential to also undermine the rule of law, instigate political instability, exacerbate social and economic tension, policies, and strategies with attendant consequences 